Marx wrote, the great social measure of the commune was its own working existence. This revolutionary experience had also an impact on Marx and Engels' theory. Based on the events of the Paris Commune, they modify an important aspect of the communist manifesto. It is no longer enough to take state power and make it roll, but to break it. That is what the revolutionaries of the commune try to do. So the background of the commune is similar to the Russian revolutions of 1905 and 1917. It was war. There were also economic declines and pressures from workers' organization against the capitalist class and the regime. France had an experience, uh, had experienced waves of strike uh, during the 80s, uh, 1860s, uh, where the first international played a role. It is relevant to mention that the French emperor had made economic policies in favor of capitalism. Many banks opened and many societies for credit did too. So Napoleon III, with the help of Georges Haussmann, will modernize Paris by expropriating more than 355 uh, people. So Napoleon helped uh, developing uh, capitalism in France, but with the help of state. So it's in this context that Napoleon will declare war uh, on Prussia. This military offensive turned out to be a total military disaster that ended with the capitulation of France. Napoleon had to abdicate power and a new Republican government of the bourgeoisie was created in September 1870. In the meantime, the international will oppose this imperialist war by promoting class solidarity through Europe. The new French government claimed to defend the nation, but in reality, it was seeking for a peace agreement and to restore order. This is because in Paris, an armed opposition to the power who lies in Versailles will be created. The workers categorically reject the Prussian occupation and Bismarck domination. The National Guards will now begin to criticize their superiors and the army. Then they will join the population in the defense of Paris. You have to know also that the National Guards were composed of men of the proletariat. In January 1871, peace was signed between the French government and Bismarck. The Parisian population disapproved this treaty, which is perceived as a betrayal. So from the moment peace is signed, the energies of the government and the bourgeoisie will be concentrated against Paris. Class antagonisms are still growing at that time. The February elections will bring to the head of the new National Assembly, Adolphe Thiers, an assembly packed with monarchists and reactionaries. This assembly threatened to pay, uh, not to pay the National Guards and demanded the population to pay their rents and their debts immediately. So under the pressure of these threats of the assembly, a central committee of the National Guard is created. On the 18th of March, 1871, Adolphe Thiers launched an offensive attack to retake the cannons from the National Guards in Paris. The armies are stopped by the crowd and the National Guards. So the French armies were driven out of Paris. <laughs> Marx claimed in his civil war in France that the real responsible for this civil war was Adolphe Thiers by launching his attack against Paris. Secondly, he raises a crucial military era. Versailles had to be attacked to neutralize the government and the reactionary forces, but nothing happened. So it would mean 
to break the bureaucratic and military apparatus of the state. For Lenin, the military question was also a weak point of the commune, especially because there was no coherent revolutionary leadership. Confusion and inexperience drove the Central Committee of the National Guard to inaction. A disciplined and revolutionary leadership would have had a better picture of the overall situation for organizing this military question. But returning to the events, Adolphe Thiers offensive marked a new rupture between Paris and Versailles. At the end of this counter-revolutionary offensive, the insurgent population will hand power to the Central Committee of the National Guard. This committee will provisionally organize Paris. So on one side, we have the capitalist and the state who want to restore order in Paris. And on the other side, we have the revolutionaries who want to end exploitation and poverty. Trotsky wrote in his pamphlet, Bolshevism Against Stalinism, in his uh, commune section, that the National Guard Committee needed to be strongly directed. It needed to be led by an organization of revolutionary cadre representing the experience and political interest of the proletariat. Trotsky mentioned that the committee's political mistake was to enter in discussions with the mayors of Paris to seek some form of legality. The committee did not want to take on political responsibilities and will wait for the creation of the commune to end uh, the power to the commune. The commune will also take the military question and ends, but it, it will be a total disaster. The National Guard should have organized the military action of the working class, but in the absence of a re revolutionary leadership, it did not. This organization could have bridged the gap between the committee and the working masses to suppress uh, confusion and inaction. Once again, Trotsky, uh, Trotsky mentions that from then on, the war office was constantly full of men asking for military equipment and supplies. They were sent away many times. So lack of organization and confusion meant that offices like the war office were overwhelmed. And at the end of May, uh, March, the Paris Commune was proclaimed. Versailles and Paris are irreconcilable. Two powers confront each other. From then on, the deputies of the Commune are elected by universal suffrage and they can be revoked anytime. In addition, deputies and civil servants will gain worker salary. Marx specifies that the elected official were real workers or recognized representatives of the working class. The supporters of the commune affirm also that the flag of the commune is the flag of the World Republic of Labor, a call that testifies the internationalism of the revolutionaries. And the political currents at the time are represented mainly by the ideas of left-wing Republicans, by the ideas of Louis-Auguste Blanqui, and the ideas of Joseph Proudhon. Blanqui believed in a small number of conspirators who would unleash the revolution. This minority of revolutionaries would reorganize society towards socialist society on behalf of the people and the working masses. For Proudhon, he believed that socialism could be achieved through small properties and reforms. He also advocated for federalism and for cooperatives. But Proudhon did not understand the historic role of the working class in abolishing the bourgeois state and capitalism. But it should be mentioned that Proudhon died something like 10 years before the commune. So Marxist ideas had yet to gain their place in the proletariat and in the, the labor movement. In addition, the commune will experience a great revolutionary dynamism, political clubs, union groups, federations, and more. 
In concrete terms, people are holding meetings, petitions, and demonstrations. The press will also be a useful tool for the revolutionaries. But despite the confusion in the leadership of the commune, several political, social, and economic reforms were decreed. For example, the regular army was abolished and replaced by the National Guard, which mean armed citizen and working man. And as Marx mentioned, both the police and the civil servants became instruments of the commune, giving them a class policy. Workers' registration notebook, which were symbols of the bosses and the state oppression, uh, were, was, uh, were abolished. Night work was also abolished for children, women, and bakers. Workshop and factories abandoned by their owners were taken over by workers' association in the form of cooperative societies. Rents and debts were suspended. The separation of church and the state was proclaimed in order to break the spiritual tool of oppression and the power of the priest, in the words of Marx. The commune will decree free public and secular education, and also, the revolutionaries had a vision of democracy that would allow workers to elect the management of companies and in the public services. However, the commune did not nationalize the means of production, nor did it nationalize the central bank. In that sense, the state and the ruling class were not attacked in the financial sphere. These measures that I told you about were adopted between the end of March and the end of May. But at the same time, the armies, the French armies will begin to take back Paris street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood between April and the end of May. So you must imagine that the production and the industrial activities had decreased because of the war. It was also diff difficult to bring food in the city. I would also like to highlight the role of women during the commune. Working class women have been very active at the grassroots uh, activist level. Working class women had revendications such as public education for young girls and the recognition of the right to work for women, of course, but also demanded good wages and social protections, everything related with political and economic equality. Some women with men will even organize restaurants for the poor and for the workers. And according to the French historian Marie Salinton, only the Marxists took seriously women's emancipation during the commune. Moreover, certain women such Louise Michel, Elisabeth Dmitriev, will have responsibilities affiliated to the commune. And a classical example of women's involvement is the famous Union of Women for the Defense of Paris. This Union of Women claims socialism, women eman emancipation, and the Republican ideals. Since the start, the Women's Union has declared that women were the most exploited of all the workers. The Union advocated also for the transformation of society and the reorganization of our workplaces. Women will be active in political clubs and in grassroots action and debates, as I said. They will demonstrate great courage and heroism because they participate to the barricades in different ways. They brought food and water and help the wounded, but also they help to reload the rifles, otherwise they were directly involved guns in hand. And they will not be spared at all by the repression that will begin towards the end of May. As already mentioned, Adolphe Thiers launched an offensive against Paris. The armies will definitely, definitely enter in Paris on the 21st of May, putting an end to the commune. But the commune found itself isolated because they had no clear steps of what to do and because they did not nationalize the government. 
It must be borne in mind that the absence of socialist revolutionary leadership was one of the factors that caused the defeat of the commune. Between May 21st and the 28th, nearly 30,000 women, children, and men will be murdered by the armies. They called it the Bloody Week. Government forces that destroyed Paris in fire made a real bloodshed against the, the population. Also, more than 39,000 will be imprisoned and more than 15,000 will be deported. Before I come uh, to my conclusion, I would like to mention a few words about the International Workingsmen Association. So the first international settled in France in 1865 during the reign of Napoleon III. According to historian Michel Cordio, the international helped to build the modern labor movement in France. The international took part in many strikes uh, in France during the 1860s, but was also persecuted. It was brought to justice for a third time in 1870, just before the war. The international had to pay heavy penalties and seven members were sentenced to a year of prison. But when war broke out, all the section of the international, but especially in France and Germany, condemned this war. That was an imperialist and dynastic war for the control of Europe. You can read about this if you want uh, in the first and second address of General Council on War of the International. And during the Commune, the International will elect 32 representatives out of 92 at the Commune's Assembly. Members of the International were also active in military action because one quarter of the members of the National Guard in Paris were members of the International. And following the defeat of the Commune, the International will be considered responsible for the disorders and for the Commune. So the international was banned from France and fought all around Europe by the elites. The office will have to leave Europe for New York. The repression against the international contributed to its weakening. In addition, political and personal tensions will increase with time and cause its dissolution in 1876. So in conclusion, it must be understood that the commune has represented a powerful symbol for the working class. They began to set up a first form of democratic dictatorship of the working class against the capitalist class. The commune decreed many measures that served, that served the interest of the working class and not the capitalist class. As I mentioned, the Paris commune was the opposite of the bourgeois capitalist society. Also, feminism should be tied to the socialist program and the Marxist class analysis. To fight for women's rights is to fight for the all working class. The experience of the commune shows the notion, the notion of duality of power between Versailles and the revolutionary workers of Paris. The duality of power is also a phenomenon that will occur during the Russian Revolution of uh, 1917. In spite of these limitations, the commune participated in the development of Marxist ideas, especially in the question of state power. I recall here Marx and Engels' modification, state must be broken, not taken as it is. But Marx did not mention what should replace the state power. But it is known, however, that the proletariat must constitute itself as a ruling class and exercise its own dictatorship against the capitalist class. Then we have to replace it uh, with the power of our social class. The Bolsheviks and Lenin were able to put forward the Soviet model in order to answer that question. You can also read Lenin's State and Revolution if you want to go further on that subject. Of course, Lenin and Trotsky criticism of the need for a revolutionary socialist organization and leadership are still relevant and important for us today. With a revolutionary leadership, 
the military question at the time of the commune could have been properly organized and applied. All the measures and reforms took by the commune could have been also executed and applied with firmness. A good revolutionary discipline is better than letting the confusion win the situation. There is also the fact that the means of production and the central banks were not nationalized and remain intact. In short, the limits of the commune shows us that even today, there's still a need for a socialist revolutionary party, a party that is based on democratic centralism and on the real interest of the working class. It is important to recall the need to form a revolutionary new generation in our international and in our sections. In this way, we will have members capable of taking on political and organizational responsibilities. Actually, the title of uh, the, the discussion is uh, when the 1871, when the workers stormed heaven. And uh, actually, uh, the approach of Marx was a very positive approach, while other uh, thinkers like uh, uh, Bakulin were very negative of it. And uh, I, the fact that the workers uh, acted too soon, actually, that was uh, the whole idea. Uh, and I, 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 I have a bit of feeling that uh, in this discussion, we don't approach it uh, in uh, the necessary positive way we should do. <laughs> because uh, I, in the introduction, to the civil war in France by uh, Engels, actually the main point he makes there is the irony that uh, the, uh, the Proudhonists and the uh, Blancists were in the majority in the uh, committee, yeah. but actually in practice, everything what was put in practice went against what they put forward. And now, uh, to begin, I, first of all, a nuance. Actually, the section of the first international in France was mainly Proudhonist. There were Marxists in it, but very few. Was, that's what Engels said at a, at a certain moment. He says, yeah, uh, when he speaks about the nationalization of uh, the, the, the bank, the national bank, he says, yeah, the problem was that the workers didn't uh, uh, weren't aware of the scientific socialist ideas which were brought from Germany. Yeah. So in France, those ideas were very weak. So uh, in practice, there was a lot of things which were not uh, uh, done, like uh, 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 the breaking of the uh, of the state, uh, taking over state power. And I, it's one of them, but also nationalization of the bank was not done. But uh, I, I'd like to say something on the position of the woman in the revolution, especially because the position of uh, the Proudhonists and uh, women comrades should read Proudhon on the, uh, the women's question. For instance, uh, I, I see one quote, eh, there's a genius, he proclaimed, is the virility of spirit and its accompanying powers of abstraction, generalization, creation and conception. And then it goes on, the child, the eunuch and the women lack these gifts in equal measure. And it says explicitly, only two careers were open to women, said Proudhon, housewife or harlot, prostitute. Yeah. That's the position of Proudhon on women. Uh, and actually, uh, the question is asked the Jacobins. Yeah, the Jacobins played, played a revolutionary role in the first revolution, the French Revolution, 1798, uh, uh, under the leadership of Robespierre. Actually, one of the first statues raised after the 
Russian Revolution was a statute of Robespierre eh, to say, look, eh, this, uh, uh, and Engel said, France is the, the country where one of the only countries where the revolution is fought out to its conclusion with the demolition of the opposite class, eh, so, with the demolition of the monarchy of the no nobles. Eh, so, which was not done in Belgium, not done in, uh, in uh, Britain, not done in Holland, eh, this, uh, in those revolutions. France was the first one. Eh? But those uh, uh, Jacobins and also the Proudhonists were not working class. Eh? That was the petty bourgeois. Actually, anarchism is not the representative of the workers, eh? the, the representative, representatives of the uh, uh, petty bourgeois. And uh, uh, when we speak about uh, uh, the proletariat in uh, France, uh, actually, 16% uh, of the population in France in 1871 lived in cities, 16%. 5% was Paris, was the biggest uh, city, 5% uh, of the total population was a million and eight hundred and fifty thousand people lived in, uh, in uh, Paris. And uh, there was a, a census which said that 44% of that population in Paris was industrial workers. But uh, uh, it was a very young proletariat, but also uh, a lot of artisans, uh, very small businesses. Only 15 uh, factories employed more than 100 workers. So it was very, a very weak, young uh, uh, proletariat, where the anarchist ideas of the petty bourgeois played an enormous role. Right? Now, then I come to the positive side of all this. Uh, when you see that uh, uh, unless, I, uh, Margaret, unless the weakness of the proletariat, also their leadership, the Proudhonists, the Blankists, the uh, Bakunists, uh, Bakunists uh, this, uh, uh, Marx was very positive of the workers who stormed heaven, uh, but ba uh, Bakunin turned against the workers, uh, he said they should have done it. It was a mistake what they did. Eh? That was the position of, uh, of Bakun. But uh, notwithstanding eh, this leadership, this uh, uh, horrifying positions on the, uh, on the women, <laughs> uh, when you see what the workers put in practice, that's uh, enormous. Eh? When you look at all the measures they took and in the uh, lead of uh, uh, it was uh, what I referred to uh, this, uh, 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 that the uh, representative should not be paid more than uh, uh, the wage of a, uh, of a, of a worker, uh, 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 the right to vote, uh, to elect, but also to recall uh, this, uh, all those uh, positions, but also on women, uh, for instance, uh, measures were taken uh, against the Catholic schools. Uh, uh, where the uh, more uh, 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 they wanted state schools uh, separated from the church, uh, where uh, a special attention was given to the formation and also technical formation of women, uh, of the, the girls. Uh, the, uh, the factories. Uh, they installed crashes for the for the kingdom, daily crashes. Right? It's, uh, I, all those uh, I, steps were taken I, this, uh, uh, in favor of uh, the women. Uh, so, I, notwithstanding all this, we see that in practice, the working class was uh, uh, from the very beginning capable of. I, taking the right measures. Now, I, uh, I, the best uh, book to read on the, uh, on the uh, Paris Commune is State and Revolution by uh, Lenin. Eh? That there you have all the lessons drawn 
uh, from uh, uh, the, the Paris Commune. But uh, when you see, uh, hey, what inspires me the most is that when you see all this, it gives you an enormous confidence. And that's always been the A of the ABCs of our international. We have confidence in the possibility of the working class to move into action and to take the right measures. But here we saw that the spontaneity of the working class, uh, and as Marx says, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the consciousness is based on your position in, uh, in society, your material position in society. And Marx says the only future for the, uh, uh, the conditions for the future lay already in the uh, uh, materialist conditions of the working class. So automatically they'll draw, they'll come to the right conclusions. But what is the role of the party? The party is the memory of the history of the, uh, the lessons of the class and also the ideological laboratory of the working class. And actually the best a pupil of Marx, it said, is Lenin, because he put into practice, he built the party. That's the main uh, contribution of Lenin to, uh, to, to Marxism. That's the party. Yeah? And with this party, you can act as a lever. And hey, when the conditions are there that the consciousness of the working class comes in, into motion, then you can lever it and uh, push it in the uh, a good uh, uh, direction. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot more to say, of course. Ah, yeah, I think uh, in the discussion, uh, it's uh, uh, I uh, uh, referred also to the internationalism. But uh, I, we always always talk about the Spanish Revolution and the international brigades who uh, went there to uh, support uh, uh, the revolution in Spain. But the same was true in 1871 in, in Paris. I, just one uh, figure, there's, uh, from the 30,000 people who were uh, massacred uh, after, uh, 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 after the, uh, the downfall of the Commune, there were uh, 1,700 people from outside France, which shows that there was an enormous uh, uh, contribution. There was Belgian uh, delegate, the German, uh, from all over Europe, there were uh, solidarity like, who went to fight with the, the, the Paris workers. And, uh, uh, there was uh, also delegation from Marseille, from the, the bottom of France, who went to Paris uh, to fight. Uh, uh, I, from all the main cities, there was uh, uh, a solidarity sent to uh, uh, workers in solidarity who went to, uh, to Paris. There was also 20 uh, departments who sent their fraternal greetings to the uh, Republic, it is, uh, I, the worker state in, uh, in, uh, in Paris. So uh, notwithstanding the fact uh, that 70% of the uh, French population lived in small towns, less than 2,000 people. So I was, you had that enormous contradiction, and it still exists actually in France, where I, uh, the water had uh, Paris, and it's uh, the big city, but uh, there's a lot of people who are living in the country, uh, in the countryside, and uh, actually the, uh, the election of the president uh, is, uh, in France, it gets, uh, I, I, you need, uh, uh, two times more votes uh, in the countryside than I uh, in uh, in the cities than in the countryside to have an, uh, a a deputy. Eh? So it's uh, I it's still uh, uh, used, but I countryside is reactionary. So it's uh, uh, but notwithstanding that, you saw all over the country uh, a revolutionary uh, 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 mood and uh, I. Uh, solidarity. 
but in France, the way uh, in Paris, out of those million uh, eight hundred and fifty thousand, there were three hundred thousand members of the civil guard. Now, when you discuss revolution, uh, hey, what is the uh, Lenin summed up four uh, conditions for a revolution, revolutionary situation, and one of them is that there is no more trust in the leadership of the bourgeoisie uh, in the policies. There's a mistrust. Okay? Uh, and that was uh, the case in, uh, in, in Paris. Uh, the workers at fault, uh, this, uh, they had given their lives, and then uh, uh, the government uh, 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 sells, every, uh, sells out to the Germans. Uh, this, uh, there was also a uh, uh, a very bad winter. Uh, in February, there were uh, movements of hunger strikes, uh, hunger uh, movements. Which is, uh, uh, and the reason why so many people joined the civil guard was because it was the only place where the, you, you could uh, get an income uh, <laughs> and enormous unemployment. Uh, so, and in that situation, you get uh, uh, I, that creates a revolutionary situation. But it's always the same. Eh? You, you, you get war, and then war and revolution go together. Right? So after every war, there comes a revolutionary situation. But what is then the task of the bourgeoisie? The first thought is to disarm the revolution. And those 300,000 civil guards, eh? they were actually yeah, a state in the state. Yeah. Uh, just the first talk was to design what they have done with the help of the German uh, uh, troops. Eh? This, uh, hey, it's not mentioned in the, in the discussion yet, but uh, actually the French army was surrounded and taken captive by the German army. Yeah? But when it was necessary to go and disarm the revolution, then the Germans let uh, the, 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 the French army go to, uh, to, the, uh, to defeat uh, the, the commune. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but what we always see to you is uh, war, then you get uh, a revolutionary situation. Yeah? And then, it, that's what Trotsky says, eh? this, uh, uh, actually, the state has the monopoly of violence. So when you speak of the dictatorship of the proletariat as a state, then that state has to disarm the opponent, opponent to disarm the bourgeoisie. Otherwise, you get a situation of double power and it's, uh, uh, which is unstable and will only end in uh, a, a situation where one of the two disappears. Uh, so when you go for revolution, then you have to go to the end. Otherwise, there come a contra-revolution. Uh, uh, but I uh, to conclude, my main uh, 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 less I, I draw from the Paris Commune is that we have to we can have confidence. Uh, that sooner or later, right? What well, the American comrade uh, is a bit uh, pessimistic, uh, but you have to uh, sooner or later, this, the situation will develop where, and that, that's a qualitative jump, uh, where uh, you get movements will will enrich uh, and influence uh, one another and lead to situations. But now with the working class who is not uh, a uh, uh, very small, but now we have a situation where eighty percent of the population can be counted as potentially uh, uh, working class. Eh? <laughs>